Yeah. So we're open. Mason. Hi, Leon. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Yeah. Mason, so we, we have a number of test beds that we could uh, possibly help you do some pilot tests. We just figure out how to have some sort of semi-active action. We don't, we don't have the magnetosolid dampers, but if you have some thoughts or if you guys construct one, certainly you could, you're welcome I, to use our... Actually, I, we, we, we have one, a small one, uh, which I fabricated, I tested in Purdue University uh, in uh, 2019. But uh, uh, for the NSF proposal, which I right now I'm working on it, is different design, which I'm going to discuss it at the last slide. Mm. Oh, I see. Uh, okay. Yeah. What's the capacity of that other damper you built? The force capacity. Oh, the um, is a small damper actually. The one we tested is around uh, less than hundred newton. Oh, that's hundred newtons. So that's yeah. about maybe twenty pounds. Yeah. So it's a small, but. Uh, I also did, did a simulation is uh, the for semi-active damper, which I'm going to discuss. The capacity is yeah. 400, 400 kilonewton. Mm, I see. You know, Liang, maybe with those small electric actuators, we can actually, if he wants to test his damper, those those things are what 100 pound actuators, possibly, right? Yeah, we do. We do yeah, have, we that. have some very small actuators that are electric that are, we, we we've been doing real-time simulation with. So is it possible even if you wanted to test and use your small um, prototype damper, at least these actuators range from zero to maybe a hundred pound capacity, very fast. They're, they're all interface with our integrated system. Yeah, you're on twice, just be careful. Yeah. what we can do rather than talk about all the details now, we could set up a follow-up meeting sometime. Maybe Liang, sure. if you don't mind, I could ask you to set up a a zoom we can see what maybe some sure. potential All right. uh, to, to do some testing there sure i i the proposal yeah my my phd advisor actually we were, we actually submitted two type two proposal to nsf when i was doing my phd and postdoc unfortunately it was rejected that time so mm -hmm. we kind of getting new idea so hopefully um, to collaborate with you uh, another researcher in uh, lehigh so uh, hopefully this time well, we get the uh, fun. Yeah. No, yeah, I, I wish well. NSF could be very competitive and you never know. I mean, it, it's it's very odd the way they um, sometimes, you know, see things or sometimes it's what's on the political horizon in terms of maybe hot topics, but they may not really be that important, at least to us. So don't, don't want to get discouraged, that's for sure. Just have to maybe know what how to say things versus you know what to say um because they do have some important programs etc okay so uh, i think we'll start we'll we'll start um uh, we're ready to go it's about two minutes after four uh we'll officially welcome everybody to the next uh neary lehigh seminar series uh today we're going to be uh our speaker is uh they're going to be introduced by the pi of the neary lehigh facility dr uh jim rickles so uh, at the end of during the presentation, we're not going to, we'll have question and answer and chat is going to be open if anybody has anything for feedback or questions for the end of the presentation. So please hold off any of that towards the end and uh, we'll have an open discussion. But at uh, this time, I'd like to ask uh, Dr. Jim Rickles to please introduce our speaker. Okay, so yeah, my, my name is Jim Rickles. Yeah, thanks for the introduction, Tommy, for that. I'm, Tommy mentioned I'm the director of the Nuri facility. And one of the things that's in our mission is to reach out to the community to inform them of, you know, work that's ongoing related to natural hazards in terms of mitigation, resiliency, perhaps kind of understand the whole phenomena. So research, you know, presentations like the one that you're today are very important in that regards. And so um, within our um, Lehigh Nuri seminar series, we have on average uh, about one once every three months a, a seminar. So I'm happy today to, to uh, introduce you to the speaker. His name is Dr. Mosan um, Jadian. He's an assistant professor in the Department of Civil Engineering in, uh, at the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley. He received his PhD in structural engineering from City College in New York. And uh, he also pursued his uh, postdoctoral research fellowship there. Um, the main theme of his research is modeling 
designing and testing of smart materials and control systems. And the purpose is to enhance the structural performance of the civil infrastructure subjected to natural hazards. And the way that um, he, he's able to achieve this is to use intelligent sensing, that's feedback signals and actuation techno with actuation technologies, along with advanced simulation and modeling techniques with an emphasis on data analytics and machine learning. So with that, I'd like to uh, hand the podium to Dr. Uh, Amjit Dian. And I should mention that the title of his presentation, if you can see the slides, it's the Magneto Solid Damper, a new generation of friction dampers with smooth hysteretic behavior for vibration control of civil structures. Yeah, thank you. Thank uh, you. Hi. Thank you, Dr. Rico. Thank you so much for introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, uh, the title of my presentation is Magnetic, uh, Magneto Solid Damper, New Generation of Friction Dampers uh, with a Smooth Hysteretic Behavior uh, for Vibration Control of uh, Civil Structures. So this uh, presentation uh, includes uh, these uh, uh, outlines, uh, introduction. Uh, so I'm going to also discuss theory and basic concept of electromagnetic eddy current friction dampers. Uh, and I discuss a proof of concept uh, prototype. Then um, uh, this, uh, the, the rest of research is going to be in two uh, parts, passive damper, a passive uh, type of uh, uh, this damper with passive mechanism and uh, also semi-active mechanism. Uh, for the passive one, we are going to introduce a magnetosolid damper uh, and then uh, present uh, the characterization testing uh, result of a small scale of that damper. And for the semi-active damper, uh, we are just limited to numerical modeling um, and in which I'm going to discuss the, uh, uh, the response control of, of multi-story based isolate building uh, controlled by this uh, semi-active damper. And then conclusion. Uh, so we know that energy dissipation is critical to limiting damage in civil structures, uh, which are subjected to dynamic load like earthquake or wind. Um, we can increase energy dissipation capacity of civil structures by adding um, uh, passive damping devices uh, to uh, the lateral force resistance system of civil structures. Uh, by doing so, uh, uh, we kind of localize an, um, energy dissipation in these devices and avoid uh, hysteretic deformation in uh, certain critical structural components. Um, so a wide variety of mechanism has been proposed uh, for such dampers. Uh, one example is yielding damper, another one is viscous damper uh, or uh, viscous, uh, uh, viscoelastic damper, and also we have friction damper. In this study, we focus on friction damper. Uh, one main reason is friction dampers are uh, solid based. So uh, they are not fluid and they are not uh, subjected to fluid leakage or uh, those kind of um, uh, weak uh, uh, characteristic, which is uh, common for fluid type dampers. Um, and we are going to also uh, show that friction dampers um, uh, have a, a nonlinear behavior, which is arise because of um, uh, a phenomenon called um, a stick slip motion. Uh, and in this uh, work, we are going to discuss how we can uh, reduce that effect in friction damper. So, uh, um, so um, th this damper can be competitive uh, with the uh, viscous type dampers or other fluid type dampers. Uh, before I start uh, the concept of such a damper, let me discuss what is a stick slip motion. So a stick slip motion is a phenomenon uh, which happens in uh, friction dampers, uh, passive friction dampers, and um, is an abrupt transition or sudden transition from sliding phase to the sticking phase, which uh, consequently result in acceleration pulse, uh, high frequency acceleration pulse in the response of the structures. 
And uh, this acceleration pulse, uh, for example, can uh, damage uh, non-structural component at least. Uh, here, uh, and this, uh, 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 this usually, uh, uh, this uh, uh, phenomena happens in very small uh, velocities. If you look at this example, we have a, a small mass um, subjected to a lateral uh, harmonic motion. Then we have also friction between this mass and the ground. Uh, if we plot uh, velocity and acceleration response of this mass, uh, you can see when uh, the, uh, the velocity is very small, then um, acceleration suddenly is reduced. And in during uh, this uh, period here, which is a sticking phase, and uh, you can see the uh, velocity is almost zero, uh, uh, the acceleration is suddenly reduced uh, from uh, blue uh, point to the uh, red spot. So this is one spike we see at the beginning of a, a, a sticking phase. Uh, when uh, the velocity gradually increases or displacement gradually increases, uh, so we can see the increase in the acceleration and that sudden increase in the acceleration, that is the second pulse. And this sticky slip motion is uh, repeated uh, over the uh, uh, time and when the, um, uh, the mass is subjected to ground motion. And in this study, our objective here is to reduce this pulse. So um, to make the response of the system smoother or the damper smoother. So uh, in this work, uh, objective is to propose uh, passive and semi-active uh, electromagnetic friction dampers. Uh, in, in which we not only reduce the, this uh, uh, undesirable effect of sticker slip motion, but also we want to increase the energy dissipation capacity of the friction. So uh, the first type of damper I'm going to discuss today is passive electromagnetic eddy current friction damper. I'm going to discuss what is eddy current, but eddy current uh, I'm going to discuss that further in the next slide, but eddy current uh, usually um, um, in civil engineering application can be, uh, its force displacement can be represented by uh, ellipse, uh, uh, has an elliptical shape. If we add that to rectangular, typical rectangular shape uh, for the force displacement of the friction, so you can see we get a higher or larger uh, force displacement uh, um, uh, curve or loop and uh, at the, the corners or are smoother. And these uh, smooth uh, uh, mm, uh, uh, corner actually help to reduce the acceleration response. In case of semi-active friction dampers, um, uh, we, have a, we have a typical friction uh, a loop, but the objective here is to control the normal force. Uh, to, uh, to, um, uh, to avoid uh, the piston stay in the sticking phase and always stay in the sliding phase to uh, let uh, the damper dissipate higher amount of energy because energy is always dissipated in the uh, sliding phase. And the objective also is to help to, uh, to uh, smooth these uh, corners to also reduce the um, uh, acceleration. So for the, for the passive damper, we, uh, we provide this eddy current damping uh, um, uh, mechanism using permanent magnets. In the case of semi-active damper, we uh, smooth the corner using um, a coil. Coil have a variable magnetic field and we can control that the intensity or the uh, stirring of that magnetic field and uh, by uh, using some specific uh, semi-active controller. So the first uh, uh, thing I want to discuss, theory and basic concept of uh, electromagnetic uh, friction, uh, eddy current friction damper. So what is eddy current phenomena? So eddy current induction happens when a conductor is subjected to a time varying magnetic flux. 
such as uh, a copper pipe, uh, when it's exposed to the magnetic field of a moving uh, permanent magnet uh, falling through the copper pipe. Uh, when, the cop when the magnet is moving uh, relative to the copper pipe, because the, the copper is conductive, the, uh, this induces a current inside the copper pipe, and that current is called eddy current. Uh, that current actually also has a, a induced magnetic field. The interaction between the magnetic field of the magnet, permanent magnet, and the induced magnetic field uh, generate a force which is always against the motion of the magnet, uh, according to Lenz law in electromagnetism. Uh, I'm going to show that later why uh, this force uh, uh, is um, linear in terms of velocity. So we can kind of is uh, similar to uh, viscous damping. Uh, let me show you this um, uh, figure. Uh, sorry, this clip, uh, you can uh, just look at the motion of the magnet with respect to the pipe. How slow is that compared to free fall? So you can see there is a uh, uh, damping force against the motion of the magnet, uh, that damping force which slowed the movement of the magnet inside the copper pipe is because of the eddy current phenomena, which can be, uh, the force can be represented by linear uh, function in terms of uh, velocity. So uh, the first step to our, uh, to, uh, uh, make uh, to uh, develop a simple to develop a model to characterize uh, this behavior in in the first step we uh, develop a simple electromagnetic uh, uh, eddy current friction damper which only include uh, two magnets uh, one uh, stainless uh, steel uh, sheet and a copper plate so uh, the top magnet apply a repulsive force to the bottom magnet and uh, that pushed the, uh, the bottom magnet to the stainless steel uh, sheet and the, uh, related, and the horizontal motion of the, uh, the, these two magnets with that friction pad generate this friction force. Uh, the movement of these two magnets with the magnetic field they have, just like the magnet in the pipe, with respect to this copper plate generate, uh, generate uh, uh, eddy current damping against uh, opposite to motion of this magnet. So uh, totally the damping force is the friction force plus uh, eddy current damping force. Uh, for the friction force, uh, we use a Luger uh, model to uh, model uh, 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 generation of friction force based on the parameters here we have. NAF is the normal force and this normal force is the uh, force applied to the bottom magnet because of the magnetic field of the top magnet. And uh, we have to find NF uh, based on the uh, geometry and the magnetization uh, properties of these magnets. And also we have eddy current damping. And this uh, CE is the eddy current damping coefficient. And we have to also uh, find that damping uh, uh, coefficient in terms of parameters of the copper plate and also the magnet. So the first step uh, for developing such analytical uh, equation is to uh, model a single magnet. Uh, we model a single magnet using equivalent current model in which uh, it, the magnet is reduced to a distribution of equivalent bond surface current. So a magnet doesn't have any current, has a magnetization. Uh, because of its uh, uh, properties or natural properties it have. But in electromagnetism to model uh, uh, magnetic field of a, uh, a magnet, we need to uh, uh, simulate that or model that using uh, uh, equivalent current, which we assume is uh, flowing over the surface of that uh, object uh, uh, or um, uh, magnet. And this is that current. 
So here, the objective here is to find the magnetic field of that uh, bond, uh, that current bonded to the surface of the magnet at a uh, uh, point in a space with these three components is X, Y, Z uh, direction. So uh, I don't want to go to the details, but uh, uh, the way we need to find this magnetic field is to use uh, Maxwell equations. Um, and uh, uh, there is a parameter here, A, which is called a vector potential. And we can develop this uh, uh, differential equation uh, and we can solve it by this assumption B, uh, by assuming that B, which is magnetic flux uh, density vector of the uh, magnet and represent the magnetic field of the magnet as a curl of A. Uh, it, then we can solve this equation using this uh, 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 integral, which is, can be uh, taken over the surface of the magnet. Uh, which if we do the integration, we get the components of the, this magnetic field uh, flux density in X and Y direction with these uh, functions um, uh, for each one uh, of these B, X, B, Y, and B, C. So here you can see the magnetic flux is, uh, uh, can be represented in terms of um, uh, parameters or the geometrical feature of the magnet and also the mag uh, BR, which is uh, remanence, uh, magne uh, magnetic remanence of the magnet. Uh, usually uh, BR uh, in this, uh, for many magnet is uh, around uh, 1.2 or 1.4 uh, Tesla. So uh, the second, so we, we calculated the magnetic flux density. Now how can we calculate the force applied to the bottom magnets uh, because of the magnetic uh, field of the top magnets? So again, we use the equivalent current model. We represent the top magnet with its equivalent current and also bottom magnet with equivalent current. And uh, we already calculated the magnetic field of the top, top magnet. And we can use Lorentz force uh, by knowing B, the magnetic field of top magnets, and the uh, current, uh, equivalent current of the bottom magnets. This is the Lorentz force, uh, which is usually used for uh, calculation of force applied to coils. Here we don't have coil, we have magnets, but as I said, we can reduce those magnetization to uh, equivalent current. That is why we can use Lorentz force. So if we uh, do this integration surface um, integral over the surface of the bottom magnet, then we can develop a force for the vertical, um, uh, develop an equation for the vertical force. And the magnitude of that force is the normal force, which is, uh, which causes friction. Uh, this force again uh, can be uh, described by the parameters of the magnets and uh, also uh, magnetization uh, feature of the magnet, BR here. And we need also to uh, solve this integral, uh, which are numerical integral, and I did all this uh, numerical uh, calculation in MATLAB. No, let's, uh, uh, so we were able to calculate an F. Uh, that was one parameter we needed to uh, find friction force. The next step is to calculate CE, the coefficient uh, of damping coefficient for uh, eddy current damping. Again, we need to use uh, Maxwell equations. Um, here you can see the, uh, the mechanism of eddy current damping uh, generation of uh, current inside the copper plate. And you can see the movement of these two magnets in uh, X direction, X prime direction, uh, generate some current inside the copper plate, uh, which is density is uh, described by J prime E. And uh, these, mag these currents have a, this uh, induced uh, magnetic field and they interact with the magnetic field of the magnets and they uh, uh, finally cause a, a force which is always opposite to direction of the magnet uh, magnets. And that force is called eddy current damping force. But uh, this is a quite a complicated problem. So we have to make some assumption to simplify the, the problem and to be able to solve the governing equation. One uh, uh, assumption is we assume that the, um, these induced magnetic field are weak. They are not that strong compared to the magnetic field of the magnet. 
And this is true for civil injuring uh, uh, problems when the velocity of the damper is quite a small, which is true for uh, actually a, a damper when it's subject to earthquake. And then we assume that the magnetic field of these uh, uh, magnets are, uh, co uh, is concentrated at this uh, uh, box, which is footprint of the magnets uh, over the surface of the copper plate and is constant. So we need to find the average of the magnetic field, uh, which is a triple integration over the volume, over the volume of this uh, footprint and uh, in which we have to also consider the thickness of the copper plate. Uh, outside of this footprint, the magnetic field is equal to zero. So that is the assumption we have to make in uh, second assumption. In the third assumption, we are going to uh, uh, say that um, the copper plate is theoretically infinite. So we uh, assume that copper plate has a very large dimension comp compared to the dimension of the magnets. And the lastly, uh, copper plate is very thin. When the copper plate is thick, uh, so the, the distribution of the magnetic field is quite complicated and we need a finite element a simulation actually to find that. But here we assume it's very thin, so we will be, uh, then we will be able to develop an analytical model. Uh, but later I'm going, uh, in my work actually, not in this uh, presentation, I have also shown that uh, we, can, uh, we can disregard uh, 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 assumption C uh, by using a method which is called method of image. So we can assume that the width of the um, uh, copper plate is not uh, uh, infinite. We just assume that uh, the uh, length of the copper, where the, uh, if the direction of motion happens, is the infinite. But we can uh, uh, ignore this assumption uh, uh, using method of the image. Okay, so I don't want to discuss this, but these are all the governing equation of the uh, all the uh, Maxwell equations for a magnetic field. Based on those assumptions, we can ignore some of them, disregard some of them. Um, and finally, we can develop this integration, this surface uh, integral, um, over uh, which is taken over the surface of the footprint of the magnets over the uh, copper surface uh, to calculate the uh, density of eddy current generated in the copper plate. In terms of parameters of the copper plate and um, uh, magnets, and also velocity of the magnets, which is velocity of the piston uh, moving during earthquake. Now we have uh, the magnetic, uh, uh, we have the eddy current uh, uh, density, J, and then we have also magnetic flux uh, density of the magnets B prime. So the interaction of these two, according to Lorentz law, is uh, uh, cause a force, and that force is the damping force uh, we which uh, we are looking for. If we do the integration, uh, we can see we have two components. The y component, which is normal to the motion, is zero. The only component here we have this. Uh, uh, component in x direction and which we can show that is uh, uh, a constant multiplied with the velocity in x direction. This constant is obtained using this equation. B is the uh, aspect ratio of the magnet, uh, which you can see it is uh, appeared in these uh, terms. And also we have uh, the conductivity of the copper plate, the thickness of the copper plate, and the area of the uh, footprint, and also the average of the magnetic field inside the footprint volume. Uh, so this, as I said, for, is for infinite copper uh, plate, but uh, we, can, uh, we can also modify this for the um, uh, finite copper plate. But anyway, so for this simple uh, model, we try to see uh, if adding eddy current damping can reduce the acceleration. So we consider two index. One is maximum displacement and one is maximum absolute acceleration. And for three different earthquakes uh, with these parameters uh, for the, uh, this model, uh, a 2D of, uh, 2D of freedom-based isolated model, and also with these parameters for the um, uh, damper. Here, uh, we consider two approaches to compare the performance of the damper 
And um, uh, I think I forgot to say the capacity of the damper uh, here is 15 Newton. So we uh, scale the model. Uh, for approach B, we assume uh, eddy current damping is very large. Uh, the force of eddy current damping is almost equal to um, the maximum force equal to friction. And in case C, we don't have any eddy current, so eddy current damping, so it's pure friction. Here you can see the uh, displacement of the two is uh, the response of the system, um, displacement of the system because of the two damper is not, two uh, approach is not that different. But you can see how the acceleration in approach B, um, uh, which has highest uh, damping, uh, uh, eddy current damping has reduced. So this simple model shows us the benefit of eddy current damping. Uh, let's go uh, discuss a, a proof of concept uh, experimental study. So based on the model uh, we had, the simple model, we tried to um, fabricate a, uh, uh, a small scale of the damper in lab. Uh, but here we used four actually um, magnets, um, two magnets to generate a friction force and normal force and two other magnets to help to increase um, uh, eddy current damping because they are in contact. Uh, uh, they are moving re also related to the copper plate though. So adding magnetic field and more uh, permanent magnets actually increase eddy current. Uh, so we did a simple test. Uh, we use actually electric uh, uh, actuator. Uh, we had low cell, uh, we had LVDD to measure displacement. Uh, we different uh, a gap between the top and bottom magnet. Then uh, we did um, simulation in Simulic for two different type of actually model. In one model, we considered the mass of the rotor and kind of a friction between the bearing and the piston. Um, which is called the ceiling friction, if I remember, F0. And in this case, it's a simple uh, model, and which, which you call a basic model. We ignore uh, the mass uh, of the rotor. And uh, for each model, we have its own, uh, the involved parameters. Uh, for case of enhancing dynamic model, here you can see we can't see the mass of the rotor and the ceiling friction. Um, here, uh, you can see in case of a basic model, we were able to identify or estimate these parameters. For example, damping is 24.21 uh, Newton second per meter. Um, in case of uh, the basic, the enhanced dynamic model, you can see the blue line shows the uh, result from the simulation has been able to um, uh, simulate or uh, up, uh, or um, show the result, um, match the uh, experimental result very well. So uh, the number we estimated for mass is two, two, almost two kilogram, which is quite close to 1.9 kilogram we obtained from the hand calculation for the mass of the rotor, which, is in, which includes the mass of the permanent magnets, uh, the piston or so on. So I think that is necessary to include the mass of the rotor, especially in high frequencies. Here also we wanted to show the shape of the eddy current uh, damping force uh, uh, with respect to displacement. And here it says elliptical shape almost, and that is friction. When we add these two here, we get this smooth uh, hysteric uh, 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 shape. But um, if we consider inertia, uh, uh, which we had in the uh, experimental uh, uh, model, then we just need to add that inertial force to uh, this. And this is the real model, like real result actually we got in the experiment. And this is the force, uh, force velocity, which has this shape. Okay, so uh, the idea, so we, uh, we uh, wanted to go further and we, our, our objective in the next step is to uh, uh, ma uh, maximize eddy current damping and friction with a smaller magnets, but higher magnetic field. 
because uh, we are uh, magnet magnets have a uh, uh, we are limited actually when we want to use magnets uh, uh, they uh, the size is limited so we can go beyond the specific size maybe the maximum uh, uh, cubic magnet size is two inches uh, two inches so we can go beyond that. So the objective here is to use more magnets in a special arrangement to magnify the magnetic field. So this is the final design for uh, electromagnetic decarbon friction damper. So we call it magneto uh, solid damper. This is the design of the damper. So we have two copper plates and we have two arrays of permanent magnets. Uh, which are attached to a, a central uh, steel plate. Um, and when uh, these two array are moving respect to um, uh, sliding with respect to the steel plate, they generate, uh, is a friction force is generated and the interaction with that steel plate uh, generate this normal force. And the interaction with the copper plate generate uh, eddy current damping. So we have eddy current damping uh, uh, force plus friction force. Uh, so we have two uh, two section, and that two stands for uh, the effects of these two parts. So that FT shows the total force of the damper. Uh, this shape here, uh, this shape here shows the arrangement of the magnet. So here we assume we here we uh, use only twenty five magnets, but we can also increase the number of the magnets. But here we uh, limit ourselves to 25 magnets, but we can change the arrangement of the poles. Here is, we have a uniform arrangement. Uh, the um, end pole is in Z direction, uh, but later you can see we can also use a six more arrangement for the um, poles of the magnets. But we have all these parameters of these um, uh, arrays of magnets. We are going to do some parametric analysis to see how we can magnify the magnetic field of this magnetic source um, uh, how to increase the both normal force and uh, eddy current damping coefficient. So uh, one uh, well-known array of the magnet is called linear Hallback array. So, uh, and here you can see uh, this array if we uh, uh, arrange the magnets uh, according to this arrangement, uh, uh, the red, the red uh, color actually or direction of the arrow shows the N, uh, pole N, and the blue one is S. So uh, if we arrange the magnet, the five uh, magnets like this, uh, we can create very strong magnetic fields on one side and weak uh, magnetic field on other side. So this is called linear Hallback array, which is created by a stack magnets um, uh, rotated by 90 degree sequentially. Uh, I, we are going to use Hallback array um, and uh, three more array, which I'm going to discuss it here. The first array we are going to consider uniform array, 10 a linear alternating array in X direction. You can see the, the uh, poles arrangement is changing in X direction. Uh, uh, when the poles are changing, um, they change in Y direction. And also we have planar alternating uh, as a number four. So this is the first Hallback array we are going to consider. We call it X linear Hallback array. So uh, the Hallback uh, array is created in X direction. So we have five hall linear Hallback array in X direction. This is a linear Hallback array in uh, Y direction. And also this is planar Hallback array. So we have uh, seven uh, Hallback array. Actually, this must be seven, uh, number six. This uh, planar Hallback is number seven. And uh, before we fabricate any, uh, do the fabrication, so we need to design uh, the damper uh, to do so. We uh, uh, develop a finite model of the, the, the damper in COMSOL. Uh, so we try to do the simulation for the copper, for the eddy current, for the friction and eddy current separately. These two are, uh, the interaction is quite not that strong. So to simplify the model, we uh, assume that they are two se uh, separate model. Um, 
So for these given uh, parameters, uh, for the size of the magnets, for example, it's uh, 25 half an inch magnets and the, this, uh, the gap between them, the, uh, the magnetic, the re magnetic remanence and conductivity of copper plate and other parameters. We did a parametric analysis for the size of the uh, copper plate and um, uh, the gap between the array and the copper plate and the um, steel uh, plate. Here you can see the change of normal force uh, with respect to the gap between the array and the steel plate. Uh, and also the change of uh, damping coefficient with respect to the, um, uh, the gap between the, ma uh, the magnets and the copper plate for different array. Um, you can see the highest uh, magnetic field can, uh, normal force can be obtained for the array five, which is linear Hallback array in X direction. And also highest magnetic uh, damping can be obtained for that similar array. Um, and the red one also uh, is the one uh, is array two, which is X uh, uh, alternating array. Um, and also we have a large value for uh, damping in this array. Um, let's compare the magnetic field uh, of these arrays um, uh, and, the mag and the interaction with the steel plate. This is the steel plate. Um, here you can see the uh, magnetic field interaction of the um, uh, X linear Hallback array with respect to a steel plate. How uh, you see, you can see how strong is the penetration of the magnetic field in the steel plate. And also this is array two. This is the, also is, has a quite a strong interaction. Uh, the other are not that strong. Um, this shows the distribution of the eddy current uh, uh, density um, and you can see uh, again, um, which uh, damping is corresp directly corresponding to the dense, uh, to intensity of this current. You can see in the array uh, number four, Hallback, uh, linear Hallback in the X direction, we have very strong interaction. And also in this array, the second array. Um, in this study, we use array two, why? Uh, because array five, six, and seven, the Hallback array, the one side is strong, the other side is weak. But because in this design, we need both sides to be strong. So array five, six, and seven are not that really uh, useful for this design. So we, are, we limit ourselves to array two and we use array two. So we continue with array two to uh, uh, find the dimension of the copper plate and the dimension of the friction. So we do a sensitivity analysis. You can see the normal force is not that sensitive to thickness of the plate and also the uh, distance between the edge of the, uh, the magnets and the edge of the steel. So we use this uh, 0.5 inch for that uh, length of the edge and also 0.5 inch for the thickness of the uh, steel plate. Also, we do a sensitive analysis uh, for the copper plate. Uh, and you can see for if we assume the thickness of the copper plate is 0.5 inch, we get a quite uh, a strong va uh, value for damping. And also, uh, again, um, uh, for that uh, uh, distance from the edge to the edge of the copper plate, we again assume it's 0.5 inches. Uh, based on this, uh, Analysis, parametric analysis we did. So we have all these parameters related to the design damper. And you can see if we do a simulation based on uh, the model we have for friction and eddy current damping, uh, we were able to get 200 uh, Newton uh, for this uh, device. Uh, you have to remember, this is a small device. The size of each magnet is 0 0.5 inch, half of inch. Then uh, we develop a, a prototype of this damper. Uh, and, uh, but unfortunately, we were not able to uh, model the X linear Hallback, X linear alternating array. There was a problem because these magnets are quite strong and it's very difficult to attach them. And uh, we had some limitation uh, uh, in tools. We, so we just try to focus on this um, uh, a specific type of array. 
In this case, actually, all the magnets are statically in equilibrium. So what is, that was easier for us to attach them together. So we have two of these array, one top and one in bottom, and that, that is a copper plate, a top copper plate. And also we have a bottom copper plate and a steel plate is in the middle. Um, we did a finite element simulation to see how much is the normal value of normal force and um, uh, eddy current damping coefficient. You can see this is the value of eddy current damping coefficient, uh, which is 30, uh, 30 uh, newton second per meter. And NF is almost 80 um, newton. So we did a test in Purdue University. Um, uh, we subject we we tried to do a simple characterization test. Uh, we subjected the damper to simple to um, a harmonic load for low frequency and high frequency, and we were able to uh, measure the uh, force and the displacement and to plot. Uh, hysteretic loop of the damper for different frequency, low frequency and high frequency, which is from 0.5 to 2 hertz. In case of high frequency, you can see how uh, the shape is changing. Uh, again, here uh, you can see the influence of inertia, actually the mass of the uh, rotor, uh, which we use uh, that uh, dynamic, uh, uh, enhanced dynamic model to estimate the parameters of the um, uh, damper. And uh, we were able to uh, get good result. And the blue line shows the uh, result we get from the uh, simulation based on the estimated parameters. And the red line is the, actually is the filter uh, data, which they are quite uh, match. And um, and here, actually, uh, after the estimation for two specific earthquakes, Luma Preta and um, the other earthquake, and after averaging the data, you can see the value we get for uh, a decurrent damping coefficient is 28. Uh, but what we get from the Feintelman model is uh, 30, which are, they are quite uh, uh, close to each other. And also, we were able to measure the friction coefficients, uh, sliding and sticking. Uh, based on the normal force we uh, estimated from the um, uh, Feynman model, which was al almost 80 Newton. And we were able to estimate the coefficient of friction here. Uh, OK, uh, sorry, I'm going fast uh, if uh, uh, because I want to also finish this part, the semi-active damper. Uh, which is also an imp important part of our damper is kind of uh, our uh, study, which is kind of related to the next phase of uh, this research. So um, as I said, another way to smooth the behavior of um, friction uh, uh, damper is to use a control algorithm. So in this design, actually, we remove all the permanent magnets and we just, uh, we only consider electromagnets. So we don't have any permanent magnet, we have only electromagnet. This electromagnet, the magnetic field of this electromagnet can be controlled by uh, a controller, which controls the current flowing through the, those uh, um, electromagnet. Here we have a steel plate, here we have, um, uh, uh, two arrays of the electromagnets and the interaction with the steel plate, we have normal force. And again, this is the arrangement of these electromagnets. Here, we don't have eddy current, okay? We, uh, we uh, ignore eddy current damping here, but uh, of course we can add it, but there are some complication. Uh, if uh, we can, I can describe that uh, or uh, discuss that later. Uh, so electromagnet, uh, this shows the schematic view of the electromagnet. You can see those are the wires, copper wires we have. So this shows the parameters of this electromagnet, uh, the number of the uh, uh, turns we have in uh, this direction and vertical direction. This is the uh, N pole and this is S pole. And that is the current which is uh, circulating inside the uh, electromagnet. And we have to control that current using the uh, semi-active controller. And um, we assume, uh, so uh, the, the modeling a coil or electromagnet is quite complicated. So we first assume the core is uh, air. We don't have any um, 
uh, photomagnetic core, okay? The idea using photomagnetic core is to uh, increase uh, electromagnetic uh, force, but um, uh, modeling that electromagnetic, that core is complicated. So first we assume we have air core, no, uh, no iron core. Uh, for the case of air core, uh, we can show that each layer of the uh, copper uh, wire uh, from top to bottom, we can uh, uh, show it with one equivalent magnet. And if you remember, we develop equation for electro uh, for uh, um, in the previous slide, uh, uh, we developed equation for the magnetic field of the magnet. Then we can use those equation or formula to find the magnetic field of each layer of the copper uh, coil, and then add all these together. Then we need to uh, also uh, uh, modify the, uh, uh, the presence of the iron core using this uh, simple equation. Uh, and this is the uh, permeability of that iron core, which we can use this equation to also consider the effect of the core. Uh, this, is the, this was the equation we developed uh, based on the permanent magnets. As I said, we can uh, also use that for the, co uh, the uh, copper coil. Here, the interesting point here is NF, the normal force, can be uh, represented uh, in terms of uh, the current in, uh, inside the, uh, the coil, which is, S, uh, is directly uh, proportional to the S square of the current. And NF1 is the, car, is the normal force for a unit current. So it doesn't depend on the current, uh, doesn't depend on the current, it only depends on the uh, dimension of the uh, electromagnet. Then uh, we need, uh, we did a, a finite element simulation to uh, see uh, how much uh, force we can get from the damper. Uh, for single, um, uh, for single uh, uh, array, actually, with this, you see, with this large dimension, almost, you see, the total length is 1.4 uh, meter. And also, we uh, studied two different type of arrangement. Uh, finally, we used this second arrangement. Based on this arrangement, we found that the, uh, the thickness of the, uh, for example, the steel plate must be two inches. Uh, we have five electromagnets in X direction, direction of motion, and two in uh, normal direction. And uh, this is the dimension of the uh, ferromagnetic plate. And this is the force we were able to get from the, uh, electro, uh, from the damper, 400 uh, kilonewton. Uh, the maximum normal force, if we assume the, uh, uh, the current is 10 ampere, is 880 kilonewton. Uh, so uh, for the semi-active damper, we uh, tried uh, to use a model of that damper uh, to uh, uh, reduce or control the uh, uh, displacement of a base isolated building, displacement of the base fuller. And here you can see we have a rubber, uh, a lead rubber bearing. And also this is the schematic view of the damper, semi-active damper, and that is the array. And also we have a power supply. We have a current driver to uh, manipulate the current, uh, uh, which is flowing through the, uh, uh, the damper. And also we have some active control, which uh, uh, control the magnitude of that current. Um, let me go to the next slide. Yeah, so this is the friction force model we use for uh, the uh, damper, which is, uh, based on a cardinal friction model. Uh, one important parameter here is uh, interesting to mention is this uh, velocity term, which is called natural sticking velocity. For velocity less than this uh, uh, constant uh, velocity, a st a sticking happens, okay? When uh, this is uh, velocity is less than this, a velocity of damper, uh, the sticking happens beyond that, we assume we have uh, a sliding. Uh, this is the value uh, we assume to be uh, to use for um, natural sticking velocity. 
And based on that assumption, um, we use this equation to describe the uh, generation of friction force in the damper. The only parameter here, is, which is variable in term of uh, current, uh, is uh, NF, which is normal force, which is appeared in this term and this term for uh, sliding and sticking friction forces. I don't want to discuss this, but this is equation of motion, and we can find that uh, uh, specific force here, which is the force applied to the system during a sticking phase. Um, one thing also I have to mention is uh, that uh, electromagnets actually, uh, because of the uh, inductance they have and resistance effect, uh, um, uh, the damp, the generation of electric current in this electromagnet, in this electromagnet coil, uh, has some delay. Okay, because of that large inductance we have, so we have to. We also try to develop a current driver to compensate for that delay because of the inductance. So we needed to develop a simple model for generation of current in the. Uh, electromagnet, uh, this uh, simple first order equation. And the uh, uh, time constant we were able to obtain in terms of inductance and resistance of the electromagnet was 0.24 uh, seconds, uh, which uh, when we designed the current driver, uh, we were able to reduce this um, uh, time delay, which I'm going to discuss it here. So let's say this is the semi-active controller and this is a current driver. And uh, this is the uh, damper. And this is the current actually we measure uh, we, uh, or the current which is sensed in the damper. So the objective of this current driver is to reduce the difference between this uh, uh, semi-active controller uh, uh, imposed current and what we have re in reality in the device or in the electromagnets using this uh, simple, P, uh, simple PI uh, control algorithm. Uh, so we did parametric analysis. Uh, uh, we were able to develop or find this optimized um, transfer uh, function for this current driver. And here you can see for uh, some um, pulse uh, current, how we were able to use the current driver to reduce the, uh, the delay. The green line shows the vetoed current driver and the blue line shows the feed uh, current driver. We also try to consider some uh, noise in the response. And here you can see in case of a weak current driver, the uh, delay is less, uh, less than about seven uh, milliseconds. But in case of um, vetoed current driver, delay is quite large. You see, you need to five times of that constant time constant to reach to 99% of the impulse current or the control current. So this shows the, uh, uh, this uh, graph shows the uh, semi-active controller uh, we designed for the damper. Uh, this shows the, um, uh, this box is, or block is the uh, building represent the building. So we have the damper, which imposes or apply this force at the dam, uh, to the uh, building. And this is the current, which is uh, applied to the device uh, um, and is regulated by the current driver. And I see the current um, calculated by the semi-active controller. And this semi-active controller is worked based on the velocity we measure from the response of the structure. And also, we uh, optimize the force using LQG optimized control. Uh, and the current IC is obtained using this equation. We have NFC and we have NFI. NFC is the normal control uh, force, which I'm going to explain how we can calculate that. And NF1 is for unit current. As I say, this only depends on the characteristic of the or geometrical and uh, electromagnetic feature of the device doesn't depend on the current. So we, de uh, we developed uh, four different uh, um, uh, semi-active controller. One uh, was uh, saturated semi-active friction. So this is the very simple, we calculate NFS by saturation uh, in active uh, uh, between two uh, limits, uh, minimum and maximum. Uh, the other one is step boundary layer. So we, uh, so in the first one, actually, 
if you look at here, it doesn't detect the boundary between a sticking and a sliding phase. In the second one, which is a step boundary layer, we define a boundary layer between a sticking, uh, a, a sticking phase to see, uh, to let the damper, to semi-active control to detect uh, the sticking when a sticking happens. And we do this detection by this parameter. Uh, so we have a new parameter here, which is uh, uh, VST, which is called artificial sticking. This artificial sticking velocity is different with the one we have uh, uh, in cardinal friction model, which, which is natural sticking velocity. And this is almost uh, two times of um, that, uh, uh, sorry, 800 times of that uh, 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 sticking, uh, uh, natural sticking velocity. Uh, what is the feature of this uh, algorithm? It can detect a, a boundary between a sticking and sliding uh, phase, which we should with this uh, um, uh, uh, term here. But there is an abrupt uh, switching due to the uh, presence of saturation and sine function. This abrupt uh, switching of the saturation and sine function also change the current abruptly and suddenly, and that also increased the force suddenly, changed the force suddenly, which also caused a uh, uh, high frequency impulse in the acceleration response. So this is not uh, uh, desirable. The last uh, boundary, uh, the last uh, algorithm we develop is a smooth boundary layer, which we remove all the uh, um, step and saturation function and represent, uh, replace them with a smooth function which here we describe them with the tangent hyperbolic function. And here you can see how can be a smooth, uh, the normal force and the, uh, this uh, function for representing the change in the normal force. So this boundary, uh, a smooth boundary layer can detect boundary between a sticking and a sliding phase, okay? And also a smooth switching when this parameter beta uh, is uh, 100, this beta, which is in tangent hyperbolic function. Uh, so we did a uh, analysis, seismic analysis for three different earth, uh, earthquake, and we tried to make sure these earthquakes are strong enough, and we uh, match them to um, uh, a spectrum uh, based on a region in California with this PGA, quite large PGA, and we did this matching or uh, scaling uh, using wavelet, um, wavelet adjustment method. Uh, so this graph actually is interesting. Um, if you if you look at the time history of the displacement, you can see in case of passive one, passive one in the case when the normal when the current is constant is the largest has the largest value and is always constant. And you can see uh, we have a sticking when displacement is constant. We have a sticking, and that a sticking can see how large it can cause a very large uh, pulse in the acceleration response. In case of saturated, uh, also we have the constant displacement and that also cause, not only cause a sticking, also we have permanent deformation in the uh, piston. Uh, but in case of the other uh, uh, smooth uh, boundary and uh, uh, a step boundary, you can see the, um, the piston is always moving and has a vibration. So that means a sticking never happens because uh, these two uh, algorithm, they detect a sticking and reduce the normal force to avoid a sticking. And uh, you, can compare, you can see how the last uh, algorithm, the smooth boundary layer uh, semi-active uh, controller, how uh, the acceleration is uh, less compared to the other one. And um, uh, the spike in the acceleration is uh, really uh, small compared to other one. And uh, here you can see, com uh, here you can see the, um, for example, the red line shows the um, 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 hysteric loop uh, of the uh, damper uh, for the passive on and a smooth boundary layer. Uh, here you can see the displacement increase a little, but the, the corners are quite uh, smooth. And this smoothness reduced the displays, uh, reduced the acceleration response. And you can see this smoothness also in the uh, force displays, force velocity uh, curve. Uh, and here you can see uh, how the 
a smooth boundary layer uh, uh, a controller uh, uh, has a smaller current. Uh, 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 for example, when we have a Loma Prieta earthquake. And kind of this, we can uh, say that uh, this, damp uh, this algorithm uh, 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 save uh, power. We use a smaller amount of or lower amount of current. So we kind of can save power compared to other uh, um, controller. And here we uh, compare the um, um, uh, uh, floor displacement uh, and also floor acceleration. And here you can see that all the controller have reduced the floor displacement uh, compared to the uh, Vito damper. Uh, but you can see the highest reduction in the acceleration compared to the case when we don't have any damper is obtained for the, uh, the last uh, controller, which is the one uh, we have a smooth boundary uh, for both uh, saturation and sign function and also um, um, the uh, sticking phase uh, detection boundary. Uh, so the conclusion, uh, we develop a novel type of passive friction damper term as a passive control, uh, uh, passive electromagnetic current friction damper. Um, the idea is to combine friction with eddy current damping. Uh, uh, and uh, we say that uh, we can increase the magnetic field uh, or amplify that by adding more magnets in more in a specific arrangement of the magnets. This damper called magnetosolid damper. We also discuss how we can use uh, uh, electromagnet and coil to develop semi-active electromagnet friction damper, which can generate a smooth uh, uh, cyclic uh, uh, behavior. And we show that uh, such a damper can reduce the uh, both acceleration and displacement of base isolated uh, 